Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Llewellyn Scholes, Senior Pastor of House of Praise Ministries. And today I'm also grateful for Chris Creek allowing us this opportunity to hear the word of the Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that people can hear about the good news. In this day, there's many bad news that are circulating, but Jesus Christ is your good news. And today there's a certain portion in the word of the Lord that I would like to share with you that it can broaden your understanding to understand the word of the Lord and even understanding your personal issues. Now in the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 25, we find a woman with the issue of blood. And I'm going to read scripture by scripture and explain each scripture in detail that we can have a better understanding, a revelation and also reflect on our personal life. Now in verse 25, it says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, verse 26, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now this woman suffered severely and could not be healed either, either, either by the great physicians which she had, she could not be healed. She went to many doctors and as she spent all the money, in going to these doctors, she just got worse. Personally, when we are in a situation, we always go to people to find hope and also feel the need of, can those people heal us? But in this case, this woman could not be healed. And when I look at the situation with what this woman faced, we now realize that the problems which she had was beyond the problems people could resolve, beyond human problems. She needed a divine intervention in her case. She went to many doctors, but they could not heal her. She had money to spend on doctors, but she got worse. And as they tested and as they analyzed, they gave her instructions, they gave her directions, but all of it were a dismal. When we look at our personal lives, when we undergo challenges, trials, and tribulations, we need to be careful to those that give advice in our life because sometimes it can indeed get worse. When I talk about the bleeding of this woman, we find that the flow of blood was continuous. Scientifically, biologically, we understand that bleeding is a period or a space of a number of days that a woman has to encounter. But in the case of this woman, there was a continuous flow of blood which impacted her whole life. She could not be a wife to a husband because she was bleeding. She could not be a mother to her children because she was bleeding. She could not even be the lady of the community Why she was bleeding. Her condition, her issue which we had was slightly overtaking her whole life. And when we look at these 12 years, this woman has undergone many challenges. I would believe that at some point in time, the husband walked out. The children decided to move away. And this woman was all by herself. In this life, we can also bleed emotionally. Your emotional bleeding hampers you that you cannot be what you are supposed to be. Your emotions take the lead while you bleed. Now, when we are bleeding emotionally, for what has taken place in our life, we sometimes struggle to find that position again because we felt that life has given us a setback and even we can call it a step back. And this was this woman's situation. For 12 years, she suffered. And when people reach that level of 12 years, they start to accept it as a norm. This has happened to me. I am going to accept it. I'm not going to move forward. I'm just going to suffer and I'm going to die. This is the state of many people when they suffer too long. But verse 27 says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garments. For she said, If only I may touch his garments, I shall be made well. This woman moved out of her house just to see Jesus. She moved out of her sick bed just to see Jesus. Because the Bible says when she heard about him, that means people came to her and they told her, Jesus is on his way. The little power she had, 
she stood up and she made sure that amongst the crowds that she moved to Jesus. While moving from her house to Jesus, I believe that there was a trail of blood. Because everywhere this woman went, there was blood. Because the blood flow did not stop in her life. I can imagine what she went through, what she had to face. And many times when we face these challenges emotionally, we do not want people close to us. Because we can be at some point in time a nasty person or even a challenging person. But this woman said to herself, whatever I faced, whatever I tried for 12 years, I am going to give Jesus a try. Many people in this life can trace our bleeding. They can trace it back to our parents. They can even trace it back to when something bad has happened. And many times people want to trace our bleeding. But this has not become the focus of this woman because she wanted to get close to Jesus. In the midst of her issue, this woman declared that she shall be made well when she touches his garment. For the first time we find whereby a sick person is making a declaration. For the first time we find that this person is making a declaration that she shall be made well once she touches the garment of Jesus. Now we find in the Bible where Jesus has touched people. But in the case of this woman, she declared that she wanted to touch Jesus and she shall be made well. What am I learning out of this? I'm learning about the faith of this woman in the midst of a crisis. Now this declaration is powerful because this declaration formed the construct of her faith. And this faith demanded healing from Jesus. And when she touched him, something happened. Now, it can be controversial because all the time Jesus was healing people. But here this woman came behind him, touched the garment and she was made well. I believe that it was the faith that demanded healing in this woman's life. And many times we need to have this faith. We need to have that faith that withdraws from Christ. We need to have this faith that when we step into the presence, something must happen. Now, there were many people that surrounded Jesus and there were many people that touched Jesus, but all of them touched Jesus without faith. But in this case, someone touched Jesus with faith. Verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Immediately, there was a change that took place. Immediately, she felt refreshed. And Jesus, immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? When she touched him, she was healed immediately because her faith placed a demand and the power of Christ to be transferred. We need that kind of faith today in this life for what we are facing. A faith that demands a blessing. Faith that demands a healing. Faith that demands deliverance. I would like to say that this woman's faith made a withdrawal out of the heavenly bank of Jesus Christ. She made a withdrawal. I'm here to say she also made a premature withdrawal. Why do I say that? This woman could not wait for the cross because according to the Bible, Isaiah 53, the Bible states that by his stripes we are healed. This woman could not wait for the stripes. She needed healing immediately. And that is what I want to say to you today, that your faith has the power to demand. What are you demanding in this time? What are, what are you facing? When you're going to have faith, my brothers and sisters, there's a demand that you're placing on God to come through to you in the time of your need. Verse 31 and verse 32. But the disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? Now, we will always find those that will be controversial, that will make natural statements, that will even make confused statements. But within the spiritual realm, something took place which the disciples were not aware of. Because there was a woman of faith 
and there was a Jesus and they connected in the midst of the crowds. Many people can come to church. Many people can feel God. Many people can touch God. But if you touch God with faith, there can be a transfer that takes place and some people won't even know about it. And he looked around to see who had done this. Now we know that Jesus is omniscient, but in his human nature, he had to look around and see. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what has happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. I'm here to say that the power of God will make you confess. This woman confessed her whole life, her struggles and her troubles. And she explained what she went through and she was healed. Now there were many so close to him, but they could not withdraw from him. Brothers and sisters, we need to withdraw from God. Because if we're not going to withdraw from God, we're going to remain to have an issue. Every Sunday we're close to Him. But are we withdrawing from God? We were drawing from the songs and the worship, but all we were drawing from God. And we can only withdraw if we have faith. What is profound for me is verse 34, when Jesus made the statement, after this woman confessed, Jesus said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Nothing else. Nothing else. It was your faith that made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Go in peace. I want to elaborate on go in peace. She had so much warfare in her body because she was bleeding. And the nature of a woman is just to bleed for a certain amount of days. But because she had a continuous set of years bleeding, that means there was a warfare taking, taking place inside her body, which she did not have control over. But when she touched Jesus, she felt peace. That's the reason why Jesus said to her, go in peace. The warfare is over. I would like to say that to you today. Go in peace. Your warfare is over. And be healed of your affliction. What I love about this scripture is Jesus called her daughter. Which means it actually resonates with identity. Calling a daughter, she felt accepted. Because her identity was restored in this healing. Her purpose was reinvented in this healing. Her destiny was aligned in this healing. Just a touch of Jesus and everything can change in your life. And that is what we believe in this day. What God can do that you need a touch from Jesus. Your identity can be changed. Your purpose can be changed. Your destiny can be changed just by touching Jesus. And you need that touch right now. What I love about the scripture, she got the identity back. She could be again a wife to a husband. She could be again a mother to her children. She could be again that community lady within the society. She was completely restored. And whatever people thought about her and the issue immediately subsided. And they could not think about it because this healing was instantaneous. There are certain things. God is about to do immediately in your life that will turn things around. And I want to believe that with you. Again, I'm excited about the word daughter. He called a daughter. And calling a daughter, meaning that he comforted her out of all the misery she had in this life. Now, calling this woman daughter, since Jesus carried the blood of God inside of him for redemption, this woman made a premature withdrawal as mentioned earlier. She could not wait for the cross because she wanted that miracle right now. But why did he call her daughter? The revelation for me is because she had a blood issue. Jesus Christ inside of him already had the blood that would cure the world. And when she touched him, a blood transfusion took place from Jesus moving to this woman. And when the blood transfusion took place, that means Jesus became her father. And that is the reason why he called her daughter. Because he accepted her in the beloved. A blood transfusion needs to take place in your life where you can be called sons and daughter of God. Amen. My encouragement to you today, whatever you face, whatever the challenge is, God is the one that can give you a miracle and He can restore 
certain things in your life. He called a daughter. Maybe you must be called daughter. Maybe you must be called son. Because many times the spirit of orphanage attacks us. We feel empty and we feel lonely. But when Jesus calls you daughter, and when Jesus calls you a son, you are truly a daughter of God and truly a son of God. I would like to pray with you today to encourage you further that as this word has been ministered unto you, you need a touch from God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray today for those that have listened. God, that you will touch them with your anointing, Lord. I pray that you will touch them with healing, touch them with deliverance, Lord, in order for their identity to be restored, Lord, that they may find purpose, Lord, and also discover their destiny. I pray, Lord, that the issue shall not make them to grow worse, Lord, that they shall chase after you within the spiritual realm, Lord, and believe in the mighty name of Jesus that there is glory in your garment, Lord, that we can just have a touch of your garment, Lord, and we shall be made whole. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, wherever we find ourselves, for those that are tuned in, Lord, that the healing power will flow right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, listeners, for tuned in. May this word bless you, where you will have a touch of Jesus and your life will never be the same again. Amen.